What is going on guys, it's Pat again in the shop with another tech tip uh, on cylinder heads. So this cylinder head right here is a Vortec head uh, off my mystery C10 pickup. Uh, the, I call it the mystery motor because I don't know anything about this motor. It was built um, prior to I got it, the guy I bought it, it didn't really have any information on it. But these are the heads off that motor. Um, Soon after I bought, actually, when I picked it up, when I when I looked at, it, I knew it had a valve train noise, and at first I thought maybe it was like a lifter noise. It had like a tick, um, but what it actually ended up being was a valve guide. So I thought I'd make a quick video on uh, um, showing different levels of vi uh, valve guide wear uh, on this head. Um, so what I did when I first was diagnosing the noise and looking into it, I pulled the valve cover off, uh, and I I tracked it down to these two exhaust um, these two exhaust valves I knew it was in here and then I tracked it right down to this uh, this exhaust valve in particular using a stethoscope but when I had it off I pulled the rockers arm rock arms off and typically when you have a lifter go because I was getting a tick noise typically when you have a lifter go you can you'll feel the lash is gone and then the the rocker arm will be really loose because the lifters collapse but that wasn't the case I grabbed the spring just like this and I, I kind of forced and wiggled it and I noticed this spring moved more and as you can see this valve guide is right, right, uh, donezo. So um, I wanted to show you once I got it off and what I found was interesting with this Vortec head is actually somebody cut bigger valves into it. So this is, has like a 202 1.6 valve uh, over the stock one. Uh, 194s and 1.5s. So someone spent a lot of money. They haven't been ported or anything, but someone did the kind of the old school thing to put bigger valves in. Um, but I don't know what happened and why this valve wore out so much faster. Well, but I want to show you how bad this valve actually is. You can see it won't even stay. Make sure I have that in the camera. It won't even stay in the head. When you pop them out to check a valve like this, you can see how bad that actually is. Um, you know, when you're, whenever you look up, if you guys are pulling your own heads at home, uh, they always say, do the wiggle test. And that is an obvious bad valve. Um, this one is actually, you probably might be able to see that. This one's, this one's bad too. This one's way out of spec. But I wanted to show you a quick little test. If you can't really, if you don't really have a good feel, uh, you can see that's nice and tight. But I wanted to show you too. This valve guy is so bad that these valves are actually hitting each other. I don't know if you can, you can see that. <laughs> That's crazy. And the valves are actually all kind of dinked up on the edges. But here's a quick little trick for checking valves, which I usually do. Because uh, most guys don't have the measuring devices. They don't have um, micrometers for checking stems. So before you want to send them to the machine shop to have them check or a valve job done, you know, kind of know what you're getting into. Here's a quick test you can do. So I'm going to do it on a really bad valve first. So you put your finger, take the valve seal off, take the spring, take it all apart obviously. Um, you need a valve spring compressor, so if you, if you have to rent that, it's the only special tool you really need. Take the valve guide um, and put your finger right on the top of it and push the valve down so straight. And then quickly pull on the valve. If the valve guide is good, what you'll feel is you'll feel suction on your finger and a popping noise. I'm going to show you on a good valve. Um, let's take this intake valves. This one's pretty good. So if you listen, ready? So finger on top of the guide to seal off. Not you don't make sure there's no oil or anything. Make sure it's fairly dry because that kind of skew your results. It'll kind of take out the clearance. So put your finger on the top of the guide. You hear the popping noise? That's the sign of a good valve. So I got three levels of valves here. This one, this one, and this one. This bottom one's pretty good. This one's completely dinked. This one's pretty dinked. So a good valve. You'll hear that. Next up. See that slight, but not, no, it's no good. It needs, to, it needs a valve guide. But you see that slight versus completely, there's no, there's no suction at all. And you'll actually feel the suction on your finger when you pull it, if it's good. Like, you'll feel, that one sells it but you'll feel the actual suction on this finger when you pull it. And that's kind of a good indication that the valve guide's good. 
and it just gives you an idea of the general condition of the head before you send it to the machine shop to get a valve head in. Or maybe you're just taking them apart to check them, do a lap, lap job, and you don't really have a good indication of what it should feel like. Um, but obviously if you see that, you know it's you know it's no good. But some guys might feel that and think, oh, that, that's, that might be okay. But then do your, do your quick pop test. If you don't have that good suction, she's no good. So there you go, guys. There's a quick little tech tip on checking valve guides. Hopefully your valve guides don't look like that or feel like <laughs> have that much play because that's probably one of the worst ones I've seen. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.